Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I didn't know that this took place. I'm going to play this and I'm going to explain why I'm playing this and then give you guys an update on the young lady and the house. I think you'll find it interesting. Hold on. Okay, that's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, this song was on the 2300 Jackson Street album. Now, there are two reasons why I'm playing this. First, to highlight something that you all are not aware that's going on. Hold on, got to get them to shut up. Shut up, Mike. Shut up, Mike. We're not doing you no more. That's it. No more. No more, Mike. No more if you only believe. We just going to talk, ladies and gentlemen, because... This is low key. He's talking about, I believe. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to find a lot of songs talking about believing, especially since the year 2000. The reason why, and I'm not saying that with low key, <clears throat> I just am playing low key. He's a British artist, and many of you guys may have never have heard of this rapper. Did we get anything? Yes, I believe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear these songs, most of them are promoted by the establishment, the Illuminati Freemasons. Why? Because it's a programming tool. You, think about it. Uh, you can do anything you want. You just got to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's indoctrination. It's programming. I'm, I'm not saying all of the songs that talk, I believe I can fly. I'm not saying all of the songs are that way. I am saying the majority of the songs that speak about believe. Look, we showed you the boys to men. Hold on. As a matter of fact, I don't hate the boys to men file. 
uh, the boys, the men file. Let's go back. Okay, let's do. Oh no, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, uh get out of there. Wrong one. Whew. This folder right here. This music folder. Um, B O Y S two M E N. And we just want the I believe. Okay, so we want believe. Let's see if it can find my boys to men. Didn't like that boys to men. It probably won't boys to men with the number two in it. These are all the songs that talk about believe, and I may not be able to. Oh, no, 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 no. I know how we're going to find believe. We're going to go to the actual YouTube. I ain't got to do it that way. Um, I just I want to show you so that you guys can get it and see I didn't know I know the uh, if you only believe I know the song because I had the the I went and bought the CD and please understand something if I bought your CD that means you meant something that means that you were important enough for me to go out and purchase your CD okay because I was always bootleg I buy it off the corner, but if I went and actually went to Tower Records or someplace and bought your CD, that means you were important. Okay, I bought the Jackson's, let's see, B-E-L-I-E-B-E, -E -B -E, and let's go B-O-Y-S-2, wait, it was already there, let's get rid of that too, and where is Boys to Men Believe? We gonna get to you in a minute. Okay, that's y'all know who that is. That's Jennifer Holiday. Okay, Boys to Men Believe. Okay, I want lyrics. Oh, that's how they do to men. This is it. This is the album. Okay, this is the album, but I want words. Don't want bend the knee. I didn't ask for bend the knee. I asked for believe. And let's do the two the correct way because that's how the album was done. I keep on crying, but it doesn't seem to help at all. All right. Now, <clears throat> uh-oh, I guess we're not going to get believe. And it's very important that I show you a song like believe and the lyrics, but we're not going to find Believe boys to men were the lyrics. Where are the lyrics for believe? I know the lyrics are out there. Okay. All right. Let's see. We have two believes. I want to do the second one where the individual says, I'm not claiming ownership. Where you at? And again. Uh, no, nah, that's not the one. Let's do the one that's actually from the album so you guys can. Wait, Boys to Men believe Walmart exclusive. Excuse me? Excuse me? Hold on. Uh, Jennifer Hudson, y'all need to hold on. Now, again, you'll, you'll all see what's going on. Then we'll talk about the other situation that we told you about. Give me one second. Let's do the Boys to Men Walmart exclusive. And remember, this indoctrination, they are trying to get an entire culture, the youth, to focus on these words. And I wish it had the lyrics, but I can't find the lyrics. Let's change the game. Look beyond the surface. Open up your heart, your mind, and soul. It's time to waste the lines and break gender color. No boundaries, no limits, just music. Forget what you think you know about me. Just imagine life without love. It would be like tears with no pain. Would be such a shame. Cause I, I can see it in your eyes. You want something to make you feel alive. And that's what we provide. No.
Okay, just you wait and see. I can make you believe we can make this dream a reality. Pay attention. Let's make a brand new way, or make a brand new day, changes on the way. Now, this is not the part to focus on. Reimaginate. It's not too late. We can change the fate of what we believe. Now, guys, we got to create a new world order. No stereotypical agenda. Okay, time to create a new world order. Now, why in the world would these men put that in their song? Again, when you find these songs that have the words in our modern day referring to believe. And as you hear at the very beginning of this song, pay attention. Okay. And they want you to think that it's all about music. Well, if it's about music, why are we adding the words, time to create a new world order? When, remember, the whole issue of new world order is conspiracy. So that is what was on the mind this morning, and I thought I would highlight that a little bit more for all of you. And because I did a video yesterday and talking about um, belief, and I spoke about if you only believe, and if you've heard me say that, I was doing that based on the Jackson song, If You Only Believe. Okay, let's get back to our Jennifer Hudson. Ladies and gentlemen, songs do a lot for us. Songs spew emotions. One way or another, we are moved by song. Some of us are into hip hop. Some of us are into R&B. Some of us are into country. Some of us are into classical music. Why? Because we fit into a genre. A genre? What's a genre? If you don't know, don't worry about it. Just understand that you fit into what's called a demo graphic. Demo? How can you demo somebody's graphics? See, that's the other thing. There is so much that we need to talk about, but we're only going to focus on a couple of things this video. In the last video, we told you about debt. And we can't throw everything at you at once because it'll be too overwhelming. You won't be able to handle it all the way. I can handle anything. There you go. You just keep believing that, okay? You just, you can do anything you can want to do. There you go. You're good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the videos are not designed for anybody other than those people. Let me tell you which people we're talking about. Those people who are concerned. You know, I had somebody tell me this morning, well, I didn't want to, I didn't want to contact you because, you know, and I don't want to, you're the last person in the world I want to upset. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand there's some of you out there who are very concerned about communicating with me. Those of you who know me, you don't have to be concerned. If you know me, we've had conversations. You don't have to be concerned because you already know how I would respond to certain things. So we already have a relationship. And you are the ones who know who you are. Those of you whom I speak to on a regular basis, you don't have to worry about offending me. Those of you who have been communicating with me in one way or another, or who have been watching my videos since 2010 or 2012 or 2015, we don't have a problem. No, it's the people who just started coming on 2017, 2018. Those are the people I have a problem with because they assume and take liberties that are not theirs to assume and take. And so they create the friction. And the ones who think they're entitled, 
Well, you just need the, the reason why you don't have your comment section open is because you don't want nobody criticizing you. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, I don't care about you criticizing me. If you want to criticize me, start your own channel. Start your own channel and criticize me all you want. I mean, I'll light you up. I will rip you apart on my own channel. But no, go ahead, start your channel. You know, there were people who were emailing at first and, you know, they were really being offensive and stupid because they wanted me to talk about them. They wanted to become Internet famous so they could start their own channel and they wanted to use my audience as a stepping stone to getting their 15 seconds of fame. That's right. I said seconds. If they get that, ladies and gentlemen, I realized what they were doing. And so. I don't do that anymore. I don't talk about other people or their websites or anything like that because they're not going to get that type of credit. I'm not going to support that stupidity. So what do I do? I just ignore them. They don't mean anything. This is not about them. This is about you. You want remedy. Remember, let's go back to 2010, 2011. This was all about providing remedy for people. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my girl Deborah Cox in the background. That's my girl, as I told y'all. Deborah is just talking about, ooh, I feel so good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to focus on my people. Now, there are a lot of people out there, well, if he's going to just focus on his people, then I'm going to stop watching his videos. I don't care. I'm not begging you to watch my videos. I'm doing this to help my people. And if you ain't my people, then go sit back in the back of the classroom and take notes and shut up while the rest of the students, the people who are here for their specific reason to learn something, learn. Sorry. I, I have to do that because, again, there are a lot of new people coming to this channel and thinking that they somehow have a voice. This ain't that type of form. That's why the comments are shut off. You don't have a voice on my channel. Or there are people who are sharing information with me, okay? People who are sharing, pay attention to the word, sharing information with me that they think will be beneficial. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what information is beneficial to me. Not this right here. This is just me yesterday talking about value and advising you all to go and look up the value that you don't have to. Now, this is, let me show you how much this information is beneficial. This is the old UCC. And they mix in some of the new UCC code before the code was amended. Okay, why? How do I know this? Let's go down to the bottom. If they if they do it, nope, they didn't do it. They didn't give me a date that they published this. And this is oh, is this the PDF? Yeah, this is a PDF. Ah, and this is reference material. Somebody said we should read. Wait, see, 2007. Okay. Excuse me. All rights reserved may not be sold without express permission. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to all of y'all so that all of y'all get it. Anytime you use case law and this person, this person use case law and pay attention, scripture. You cannot copyright scripture. I apologize. And that's where the ignorance starts. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot copyright case law. You cannot copyright scripture. But again, when you're looking at this, do not follow the scripture. Do not, do not go according to that junk. Go according to the quoted information from the actual case law. Dana, you know how much I like you, Dane, and I want to roll with the Dane. Y'all don't mind rolling with the Dane? I, well, today we're going to skip the Dane, okay? Oh, I know what's going on. Okay, no, no, I know what's going on. I got to we got to skip. This is Superwoman and I told y'all about Patty LaBelle and all of them. 
but we have to skip. Nope, got to skip past these guys too because it's in a certain order. And so the same songs that are played before will come on. And so I have to skip to a song that, oh, we can do Lenny Williams, y'all, because he's going to talk about loving somebody. Now, if y'all don't know nothing about Lenny Williams, then y'all know nothing about music, okay? Well, anyway, let's get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens is a lot of these sites will do things like this. They will quote the case law, and then they will put their opinion, okay? Well, don't you do the same thing? No, I do better. I will give you my opinion, and then I will back up my opinion by showing it. Look, a person borrower gives value right to foreclose assets on the bank's books for rights from creditor use the public's credit if he, the borrower, gets those rights, the public use of public credit in return for his, the borrower's commitment to extend credit promissory note. The person lender creditor gives value use of public credit to the debtor for rights from the debtor to foreclose if the lender, he, the creditor, gets these rights, those rights to foreclose in return for his or her, the lender creditor, commitment to extend the public credit to the borrower. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, they're not extending your credit to you. Okay, we just proved that this past week. When the lady went in and she signed those two things, pay attention, she only signed two things. What did she sign? The mortgage and the warranty deed. That was it. She didn't sign nothing else. So guess what they did, ladies and gentlemen? After they tried to have her arrested for going into her own house and the court threw that stuff out and made sure they reimbursed her, okay, but they also have tried to recontract with her. Look, they had a servicing company contact her. You can't do that. I, why would I want to? Why would I want to service her? I don't need you to service my note. I already got a trustee. Oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you the full details. When she did what she did, I instructed them to go ahead and assign a trustee to oversee the account, to oversee the trust, to take the property and place it in a trust, okay, immediately. Remember, the property had nothing to do with the loan. We, The bank had no attachment to the loan, but there was a loan. So people, they can't forget that part. So I told them the bank is going to come and the bank's going to come hard. It's okay. Man, please. Go ahead and take me to court because I can't pay y'all unless y'all going to receive my tender. It's all about tendering payment. And that's all she's going to do because all she promised to do was to pay them back what they paid her. They did not give the other owner money. Remember, she got the loan based on her credit. And a lot of people don't understand that, but I understand it. When she got the loan, they tell her, we're going to need to run your credit. Okay, you qualify for, well, if you had a score of 785000 then you would qualify for $885 million worth of a loan. So you can pretty much go and buy anything you want. But because your credit score is only 640, you only qualify for $260,000. That's, that's the most we can qualify you for. So now you got to go find something valued at less than $260,000. Okay. All right. Anything over than that, you're going to have to pay the difference. So just two, under $260,000. Or you're going to take out a second mortgage. Okay. But for right now, we're only going to approve you for this amount. So go look for what you need. And you go out there and you go home shopping for your price range. And you finally, with your realtor, you settle on a property. And you say, this is the one I want. All right, I will get this to the lender and let them know. And they will have their underwriters let us know. Hey, we got funding. We got funding. We got funding. Now, the only thing left is now we need to sign the closing docs. Wait a minute. So you mean I already got the money? That's right. All you need to do is come for us to give you your paperwork and the keys to the property. Okay, so you go there and what do you do? The woman only signed the warranty deed and the, uh, what is that thing called? The mortgage. And that was it. She didn't sign nothing else. 
Technically, she didn't have to sign nothing else. The property was already hers. Oh, and by the way, guess what the bank can't do? They can't go and withdraw the money from the borrower. They don't have the power of attorney. They don't have anything to mess with the transaction concerning the home. They have no authority. Do you understand? This was all done without the signing of any other papers. The bank gave the loan based on the loan docs, the original loan docs, the original application. What was the collateral? The person's credit was ran and they were approved based on their credit. So when these guys are saying public credit, they're technically right because all credit is public credit because it's full faith and credit. Okay. And your full faith and credit combined, 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 combined extends to be the full faith and credit of the United States. Is it making sense to you? I hope it makes a little bit of sense as of yet. Okay. Which is why when she took her papers and walked out of that office, they went chasing her around that parking lot. They didn't have any standing. They couldn't steal the papers from her because they belonged to her. They didn't belong to the realtor. They didn't belong to the bank. It was her loan. She received the loan. Okay. Now she just has to tender payment. Okay. Certain other things, as we told you, have been taken care of. I know, I know a lot of you got suggestions. Of, we're not concerned about your suggestions. This is not your process. This started as a result of information that they received from the Eon channel. See, some people actually put to work what's being said. I'm not asking you guys to be guinea pigs. I'm only going to support everything I say with facts. Okay? In the past, now see, people, you can't go back and listen to a video done in 2012 and not catch up to the current information. Okay? Because just like these guys here in 2007 gave some information, these were the facts back then, what they believed to be the facts back then, thus, i.e., the problem. We have gotten to the point where we done more research. And look, you don't give your credit via your signature. I know, I know. Hey, wham! Careless whispers of the good friends. One of my favorite songs. When that group first came out, that was the song that I could not get enough of. And I was a fan of Wham! Ever since. Ladies and gentlemen, for instance, the value that you receive from the bank is the loan. The consideration is you're paying back the bank at interest. Okay? That's the value and consideration there. Once that agreement is taken care of, hold on. There is another thing that takes place. The bank, remember, your loan has nothing to do with trading on anybody's market. There is no obligation to let your property be traded on the market. It's not part of the agreement. It's not part of the lending agreement. And that's the Truth in Lending Act. What happens is the bank asks you. Now, I know it doesn't appear this way, but they do ask you for permission to trade your property on the market. That's why you signed the mortgage. Well, no, the mortgage is for the security in case I don't pay back the loan. You're absolutely right. That's what it said, but it's after the fact. There is no obligation for you to place it as a security. So because there's no obligation, there must be value for that consideration. Do you understand? Because that's another contract. You want to trade my property on the market? And you're saying you want me to put it up as collateral for paying back the loan? Okay, what's my benefit? Because there must be value and consideration. We talked about that yesterday when we went over to UCC. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's how we got to this in the first place. Let's go back. Let's go back. Uh-oh. Didn't mean to do that. I said back. I didn't say, I said, let's go back. Okay. Whew. Accepted for value. Education center. Okay. Again, as I told you yesterday, see, value and consideration. 
there must be value and consideration. Oh, I see what happened. Let's do this. We got to put you back here. Never gonna dance again the way I dance with you. Look at it. Accept it for value scam. Accept it for value is not a scam, ladies and gentlemen. It never was. Okay? And this is the Jim Thornton document. Like I said, respect for Jim Thornton. But things have evolved and we are a little bit clearer on what's going on. So when the bank takes your property, they say they want to trade it on the market. There must be consideration given for the value. Okay? Value and consideration goes hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. In a contract, there must be value, there must be consideration. An instrument is issued or transferred for a promise of performance to the extent the promise has been performed. The transferee acquires a security interest or other lien on the instrument. Anytime it's an instrument, it's a security instrument other than a lien obtained by judicial proceeding. Hold on. Let's find out what they mean by instrument. Can't make it too big. Instrument means a negotiable instrument. Okay, pay attention. Notes, drafts, checks, cashier's checks, teller checks, traveler checks, certificate of deposit. It's a security. Okay? Please understand, these are not my words. These are their words. These are definitions according to Uniform Commercial Code 3, Section 103. Negotiable instrument. Instrument means a negotiable instrument. So when they say instrument, ladies and gentlemen, it's simple. It's I know for you because you haven't gone over this is difficult because you don't have a foundation in which to start. What this is what you do. You see how I'm in this right here? Look, a promise. Okay. The word is already highlighted for you to look up. What's a promise? It means a written undertaking to pay money signed by the person undertaking to pay. An acknowledgement of an obligation by an obligor is not a premise unless, I said premise, unless the obligor also undertakes to pay the obligation. So an acknowledgement of an obligation is not a promise to pay unless the obligor, the person who's promising to pay, also undertakes to pay the obligation. Okay, that's why they have you sign the original papers. And then they want you to sign the mortgage. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know what somebody brought to my attention regarding the rescission of the mortgage contract, okay? Because we told you we needed to have information regarding the rescission of the mortgage contract. A young man contacted me, and at first when I thought about what he said, I, you know, but then after I gave it some thought, he's absolutely right. Watch this. We're gonna we're gonna keep our Cornell Law stuff up. Let's get we're gonna keep value in consideration because you really need to understand value in consideration, people. You really need to understand that every contract must include value and consideration. Someone has to give value, someone has to receive consideration. If someone receives consideration, then they have to have given value. They go hand in hand. Every contract must include value and consideration. You must understand that. Your mortgage, your loan, all of that receives value and consideration. Wait, get out of here. See, we ain't going to do no more candy. That's why I got to skip, y'all, because the same songs will play over again because those are at the beginning. Yeah, we can do Usher's His Mistakes. I, I like this song, y'all. Now, if y'all ain't heard this song right here, this is when he was married. And this was the stuff he was going through. Look, Usher's a nympho. He's a, a man hoe. And so he's had to go through what he's been through. Okay? Usher, I'm just telling the truth. Don't get mad at me. Because our friends in common, 
they know the truth and we done talked about it. Okay, hold on. Um, I just put in a simple phrase. This POA supersedes all previous POAs, power of attorney, and revokes all previous POAs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do a revocation of your deed of trust, if you're going to do a revocation of the POA, you want to do a revocation that replaces and or revokes all prior POAs regarding this matter. And you put the matter there. OK, this is taxpayers information. It says Kansas Department of Revenue power of attorney. Now, guess what? All of the tax power of attorney documents do this. And you want to assign someone as the attorney. In fact, what you think I just do these? Look, people. I hereby revoke all earlier power of attorneys on file with the county recorder's office and or the state of blah, blah, blah. Get, guess what, y'all? This is what y'all need to do. They recognize this stuff, okay? Uh, look at that. Signature of taxpayer. Who lordy. You don't want to be a taxpayer. Mm -mm -mm. You don't want to be a taxpayer. See? Instructions for power of attorney authorization. Okay, and then it says social security number and address and all that other stuff. Okay, people, this is for Kansas. Okay, but pay attention so that you all get this. This is a simple power of attorney. And you can revoke all previous power of attorneys. Okay, so the young man who offered that advice, he was 100% right. This is one way that we should be going about revoking and canceling all other power of attorneys. Okay. And I just had somebody do a power of attorney, and we're going to have to have that person uh, add this language to the power of attorney. And we're going to have to send it out to everybody. But that's what we need to do. We need to revoke. And somebody says, well, if you do that, then they can accelerate. Let them accelerate. You only want to revoke the power of attorney if you have already been um, given a notice that they're accelerating, given a notice that you're in default. OK, you need to take away their ability to do an assignment. You want to remove that assignment. This is what I'm working on today. Look, if the person had not mentioned that, I would not be thinking along this line. I would be thinking that we needed something special, some some other information. That's why I can just type it in and show it to you. OK, so, yes, some of you, your, your information is very helpful, Momofo. OK, but some of you are given and saying things that are just so basic and rudimentary uh, that you, you're, you're just an irritant. Why? Because you're just starting off down the path of understanding and you, but I can contribute. I'm smart too. I got my education. I got my GAD. Okay. This is what I've run into all my life. And I'm telling you, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. Yes, you can contribute. You can add a little bit of seasoning to the pot. But please don't sit up here and try to add the entire gourmet meal for a meal that you've never cooked before, that you have no clue as to how it is to be prepared. Please don't do that because you're just embarrassing me, you, and the rest of the world. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we just showed you the revocation regarding the power of attorney is because what you need to do is you don't just revoke the power of attorney. You do a and the states recognize a durable power of attorney. You don't have to do a durable power of attorney. What you have to do is just a power of attorney, which supersedes the current power of attorney. OK, because you don't have to give the banks power of attorney. There is no law saying you have to give them power of attorney. Power of attorney is never permanent. Okay, watch this.
I always do men as opposed to man. Power of attorney questions and answers. Power of attorney questions and answer. A power of attorney should never be made indefinite or permanent. A power of attorney does not need to be recorded. Okay, Illinois statute short term form or short form for power of attorney. Okay, power of attorneys are not permanent, ladies and gentlemen. The person who issued the power of attorney has the right to change the power of attorney. Notice and change in terms and contract. Okay. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to tell you? That they have been lying to you if you believe that the power of attorney to sit up here and foreclosing your property is something that is absolutely necessary. See, whenever we have a loan request where the borrower or borrowers will not be present, the power of attorney, non-permanent resident alien, nobody cares about no non-permanent resident alien, but this says bar is eligibility. Okay. This is a loan, people. Remember, the idea has been for us to cancel the power of attorney. My mouse is very sensitive. I wasn't even touching the keyboard when that happened. Okay. Security National Mortgage will allow mortgages made to natural persons only if the borrowers are any other type of legal entity or hold title to any other type of entity, such as a corporation, S corp, non-revocable, intravirus trust, or intervenous trust, life estate, land trust, blah, 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 blah. The mortgage is ineligible. Okay? But this is a standard way that they do everything. Whenever we have a loan request, where the borrower or borrowers are not present to sign the loan documents, pay attention, loan docs, and therefore are using a power of attorney, the underwriter needs to evaluate the file very carefully to make sure the use of a POA does not present undue risk with the loan file. After reviewing the overall transaction, other documents of the credit file, credit file, you need to understand that's what is your collateral is your credit file. Use that term. That's their term, the credit file. If the underwriter can justify the use of the POA, they should put a condition in E approve. This is E approve means internet electronic. And then sign off so that the closer funders no, the file is okay to close with the POA for the borrower. If the file goes to closing, closing with the use of the POA for the borrower, and there is not a condition listed or a sign-off by the underwriter, it is the responsibility of the closer, the funder, to return the file to the underwriter so a proper risk analyst can be made. This is all done. Remember, they've already approved the loan before you even post anything as collateral, okay? And the reason why you need to be a US citizen, a US resident is because they need to be able to get their money from the treasury, do you see? That's what all of that's about. This is so, once you understand, uh oh, treaty trader, E1, treaty trader. This visa is essentially the same as an H1 or an L1. The title refers to the foreign country status with the United States. Why? Because they attached the birth certificate of the individual from that country and their social security number for their country or national security number, as it's called in most countries. Okay? That's all this is about. This is letting you know exactly how the process is done. Look, social security number. All borrowers must have a valid social security number. Why? because they need to attach that number. The following documentation is not acceptable in lieu of a valid social security number as they do not evidence the borrower's right to earn income in the United States. In order to borrow, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to earn income in the United States. But the reason why you need to earn income because you need to be a taxpayer. Okay, now please also understand when they are trading your mortgage on the market, your property becomes a investment property. 
if it's an investment property, you have to pay taxes. Okay? That's why the OID and all of that stuff comes into play. Without the property being traded, and that's what happened last week. The woman's property cannot be traded on the market. Why? Because she had been giving them the authority to do so. They can only trade your property in the market when you tell them, yes, you can trade my property in the market. But if you agree, that's a contract, there must be consideration and value. The consideration is you allowing them to trade. Where's the value? Value must come back to you. Well, you can apply whatever monies I'm supposed to get to the monies borrowed. Okay? Revocable trust created by individuals. Okay. We don't really need all of this. This is Illinois land trust is created by. Okay. So I guess they do cover everything. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with the mortgage, the suggestion is you take care of your business by first terminating the agreement, revoking the power of attorney and all other power of attorneys by doing a new power of attorney. You want to give power of attorney to a corporation such as pay attention. If you've created a corporation, most people have, most people have created a corporation. However, most people created a 98 series number and this number and that number, but they have not established and the actual corporation. It is important that you establish the corporation, that you make the corporation nonprofit, or you can assign the POA to a trusted family member or friend, but it has to be trusted. Sorry, you can't trust your family members these days. I'm a person who can tell you for a fact that family members can't be trusted. I have a particular family member who continues to try to take advantage of me, thinking I'm not aware of it. Now, I believe in one thing, ladies and gentlemen, and you guys have to understand this. I believe everybody reaps what they sow. That whatever a person so soweth, so shall they reapeth. Well, anyway, I do believe that. I believe that that is the only law that is fundamentally, foundationally, a maxim that no one can avoid, not even the true God, Jehovah himself, can avoid reaping what he sows. Does he sow anything bad? No, which is why he never reaps bad. He can only reap good. You reap what you sow. If you do good things, good things will come your way. But why do bad things always happen? Because somebody did something bad at the beginning. And that caused bad things to happen, but eventually those bad things are going to stop because somebody put some mechanisms in place to cancel out those bad things. Just going to have to be patient. Anyway, that's enough about that. So you want to do it with a trusted family member, trusted friend. Okay? You can't do it yourself. You cannot give power of attorney to yourself over your property because the courts will play games with you. And many of you are not prepared for that. Okay, but you want to supersede, suspend, revoke all of the prior power of attorneys and or agreements with respects to the rights to the property. Okay, only after that do you take and do an assignment. You are the grantor. The only reason why the lender gets to do the assignment is because you gave him the power of attorney. So once you take away their power of attorney, then you do your own assignment on the record. You put that power of attorney rescinding, revoking, and undoing those previous power of attorneys on the record so that you have a chain of title there. You also put into the record the satisfaction of mortgage. Now, why? Because we told you what the letter we put up yesterday to the Department of Business Oversight in California that borrowers get to file a complaint for the fact you have not been receiving your dividends. 
The bank's been cashing in and they've never paid you. What are they going to tell you? Oh, they didn't have to give you no money. You're not involved in that transaction. Let them put that in writing. Then that means that there's no consideration, which means that contract is void. Because without consideration, the contract is void. You just have to understand basic contract law. So look, 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 ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you before this video started didn't know where it was going. I knew. But a lot of you, while listening to this video, thought you already knew all the points that we just talked about. Yeah, but you weren't thinking about them. These were far away from your mind. Now we're having you catch up. What I'm trying to tell you is why I'm doing research, what the processes I'm working on independently, I'm sharing with you. That's what these videos are about. Many of you want to want to be a part of some group or some little study group or we don't I don't do no stupid study groups. In study groups, people get to bring in their own opinion and then they get to take us off track. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and look at all the videos I've done over the past year. They are all talking about the same subjects. Why? Because I allowed myself to get taken off track before. I'm not going to allow that again. That's why I'm not happy with some of the emails people are sending me that have nothing to do with what I'm talking about. They want to talk about other stuff. I ain't got time for that. If you want to go do research on something else, you just found something new, good. Oh, look, mommy, a yellow balloon. Oh, looky. Oh, that dog has a tail. Oh, mommy, did you see that bird right there? That bird right there just sit up there and just let that. Oh, oh, did you see that car? Oh, mommy. Oh, there's an ant. Oh, God. Look, there's a cloud, mommy. Oh, did you see that leaf on that? Oh, there's another leaf on that. Oh, there's a leaf of grass. Okay. You guys are getting distracted by everything and you're following every single new process that's coming up. And somebody just came up with a new idea on how to sit up there and go to the bathroom without wiping their anuses. And so you want to try that because it seems like something you'd be interested in. And then somebody else came up with a new idea on how to breathe without breathing. And you really want to try that because you're so tired of breathing. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who want to try the new idea on how to breathe without breathing, Y'all all jump on that bandwagon because you're all oxygen robbers, snatchers, and you, you're depleting the oxygen in America and in the rest of the world. And we need you to figure out how to breathe without breathing so you can spare the rest of us. Okay. Hey, everybody wants to rule the world. So we're going to go ahead and let tears for fears. Bring us on out of here and thank all of you for joining us today as we talk to you about value and consideration economics and the wonderful revocation that power of attorney. OK, as a matter of fact, let's do that so you guys can understand exactly what we're going to do. I don't want that right there. We, we don't need this. Well, we could have used this, but no, we're not going to use this. This is not what we need. Look, I clicked on it once. I guess it wants me to click twice which doesn't make sense. Durable power of attorney, no, we want the revocation. Uh, oh, that's because I put not permanent. So let's do, watch, one click this time. The other one is two clicks. Click, 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 click. All right. No, nope, that's still not permanent. We need, we need the revocation. So Okay, this is going to be our title. That's why I'm copying it right now with all of you, and it's going to end with banks. So all of you will know how we get rid of their junk. All right, got to go. See you later. Adios. Goodbye. Sayonara. See I'm gone.